uh, God's given me a word for you today. And um, I know a lot of people, a lot of pastors may say that, but I really believe if I have ever given a word to Elkhorn, that this word today, I believe it comes straight from the throne room of Jesus Christ. I really believe that. I searched him and I, I sought him and hallelujah, praise God, he found me and I, I touched him back and he touched me. And today I want to give you a word that God laid on my heart coming from Luke chapter 23. If you have your Bible, Luke chapter 23. If you don't, the, the scripture will be on the big screen up here. Um, awesome. Turn to your neighbor and say Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas. How many of you know there are... Uh, there had to be a birthing before you could ever have, have a resurrection. Same way with you and I. If you and I are ever going to have a spiritual resurrection, you've got to have a, a new birth. You've got to be born again. You've, you've got to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Today, I'm going to be preaching. The title of this sermon is The Three Crosses. That's the title, The Three Crosses. And uh, I've, I asked some men to help me get three crosses up here because I think it's going to bring out the word better, it's a visual, it's a prop, and I, I'm big on that. I, I think it does, it brings out the word a whole lot better. If I can preach the way that God touched me last night in my office, that's all I'm asking God to do is just allow me to preach today the way he touched me at my home last night. I was so touched by the presence of God, I had to literally get up and take a break because it, it was overwhelming. Dana looked at me and she said, what in the world's going on? I said, honey, there's nothing like the presence of Jesus Christ. There's nothing like when God in that holy divine moment, when God touches you and you have to get up and say, oh, I can't take no more. Because see, the flesh can't stand where the Spirit's at. So uh, today I, I pray that God gives me the words that, that he gave me last night. And I'm going to do the best I can. Uh, it's so good to have my mama, my precious mama, my jewel of my, uh, my life. She's here, and uh, my brother, and sister, and sister-in-law, and little nephew, little Cooper, he's in the house, and so it's good to have my family here with me today. I love worshiping with my family. Um, Luke, chapter 23, if you're there, say amen. Amen, amen good deal. We're going to go to verse uh, 32. I'm reading now the NIV today, because I think it brings it out better. Luke, chapter 23, verse 32 through 43. It says these words, the, the other men, two other men, both criminals, thieves, were also led out with him to, to be executed. Listen to this. When they came to the place called the skull, there they crucified him along with the criminals, the two, the two other thieves. One on the right, everybody say one on the right, and one on the left. Look what Jesus said. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. They, they, or they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching. Listen to this. And the rulers even snared at him. They said, he saved others. Let him save himself. If he is, listen, if, 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 if he is the Christ of God, the chosen one, if he is. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. Verse 36. The soldiers also came up with, and they, they mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him, which read, This is the king of the Jews. Isn't that amazing? They said, If you're the king of the Jews, and they even put a note above it and said, This is. <coughs> They was questioning what they put up. It's amazing. Watch this. He said, aren't, he said aren't you, aren't you the, the Christ? Save yourself and us. Verse 40. But the other criminal rebuked him. Listen to this. The one on the left rebuked him. Don't you, don't you fear God? This he said these words. Since you are under the same sentence, but we, listen to this, we are punished justly. For we are getting what, what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, listen to this, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. 
Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth, because God's not a liar, hallelujah. I tell you the truth, today, everybody say today. Yes, you will be with me in paradise. Yes, you will be with me in paradise. Not today. You're not going to go down to a grave and sit there until you work out your sins. God said, today, you're going to be with me. You're going to be with me. Uh, see, now I want to show you something. These three men that were on this cross were there for the same reason. It's a one thief that was on the left side of Jesus was a thief. He was a criminal. He stole. He, he cheated. He lied. He done all these things. And then you got another cross on the right side. Hallelujah. The right side of the other cross, the right side of Jesus, same thing. He was a thief. He was a criminal. But there was two different indications, two different motives behind these men that I want to give you today. And I know you'll be blessed here today. There was three crosses, three men with three different motives. The first one, the first cross I want to talk to you tonight, today about is the cross on the left. This cross was called the cross of rebellion. Listen to me. The cross on the left that Jesus was up with was the cross of rebellion. I started thinking about this man on the left. I just started wondering what kind of childhood did he go through? Well, what kind of things did this man go through in his life? Did, did, did people make fun of him at school? Well, how did his parents raise this man, this thief, on the left side of the cross? I don't know how he was raised, but all I know is the Bible says he was a thief. He was a criminal. And this Bible, this word that we read today, there was no difference from the right side or the left side, but what was in the middle, hallelujah, made the difference. And I'm telling you today, when you make God the, the middle the center of your life, and everything you got is pointing toward, back toward the middle man, the, the middle cross, and all this other stuff, whether it's on the right of you or whether it's the left of you. I love what God says. He says, even before he died, he said, Father, forgive them. Because, see, I'm going to tell you something. A lot of people think the cross is a condemning cross. Uh, it's a redeeming cross. What died on that cross is still alive today. He's living today, and he's alive more today than ever before. Somebody give him praise in this house. Don't ever forget, it took somebody dying for you to live. He wasn't just a baby in a manger. He was the holy and anointed one. He was set aside with a purpose. And he had you in his mind when he died on that cross. Hallelujah. That just makes me want to shout hallelujah. I started thinking about the man on the left side. The Bible says that he, he became rude. Think about this. He was a thief, same as the other man on the right. But he started getting rude. He started cussing God. And he started mocking God. If you're God, do what you can do. Save yourself. You can't even save yourself. And oh, by the way, if you can save yourself, please save us. The man on the left side of Jesus became indignant. He started cursing. He started mocking. He started making fun of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And I just started thinking in my mind, here this man on the left, Scott, was just feet away, feet away, inches away, Melinda, from reaching out and touching the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And his heart was so hard. He had so much rebellion in his life, whether it be through his childhood, whether it be through at school. I don't know what he went through, but his heart was hard. His heart was hard. I started thinking about this man started blaming God. He you know, it's so easy to blame God. I'm preaching now. It is so easy when things don't go right in your life. When things don't look good, you blame the middleman. You start blaming God. Lord, I don't know why they treated me like that. And I don't know why daddy ran off and left me. I don't know why we lost two babies. I don't know why, Lord. But I'm here today to tell you we serve a God. Hallelujah. When he's in the middle, he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He's on time every time. That's my God. Somebody praise him in this house. He'll never leave you. He's on time. He'll never leave you. He's God yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's the king of the Jews. He's the great I am. I'm preaching now. You better get on your feet and praise him while you got a chance. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Oh, hallelujah. Woo! 
Lord, we come to praise you. I was on the left side one day. I rebelled against him, Mark. I've rebelled against him before. I know some of you have been hurt. I know some of you have things going on in your life. As I'm telling you, if you're listening to this preacher, I had to learn this the hard way. So easy to blame others. But the man on the left, the man, the thief, on the left side of the cross, inches away, feet away from touching Jesus, had the same opportunity that the man on the right had. But his heart became hard. He started rebelling and cursing. And again, I know how many of you in here, man, you come out of a mess in your life. It's not been easy in your life. You've had people walk out on you. Your friends walked out on you. People you thought they really loved you walked out on you. I know I'm preaching now. Hallelujah. And you're like the man on the left. You're looking at God and saying, God, where are you? Can I tell you, he's not on the cross no more. Can I tell you, just drop by this morning briefly and tell you that he's God and he's got you and he won't let go of you. He will not, even in the down times, the hard times, when you feel like a thief on the left side of the cross. Got to hang on when you let go. He'll never leave you. My God, I know, Sheila, you can testify. He won't let go when you're in the hospital bed laying flat on your back. He won't let go when you can't pay the bills because he owns the economy. He owns the bills. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Hey, he's my God. Glory to God, he's my God. He won't let go. But that man on the left, I I want to ask you a question. Are you acting like the man on the left? Are you mad at God this morning? Are you upset at God? And it's easy. Listen to me. It is so stinking easy to come to church and lie. You can walk in and put a smile on your face. You can say, hey, brother, how you doing? But I'm telling you, I believe the Lord gave me. This started with me, not you. I'm preaching to myself today. I think that's why it tore me up so bad. Because I had a left cross experience. Listen. I started thinking about the cross on the right. Point number two. This was called the cross of repentance. I want y'all to think about this. I want y'all just to get in your spirit so bad. See, remember the man on the left side of the cross was a thief. The man on the right side of the cross was a thief. Both of them were guilty. But the man on the right side of the cross turned the cross of rebellion. Watch this. He turned that cross of rebellion into the cross of repentance. I hear people say all the time, and I know you do too, they say these Whew, the devil ain't going to stop this boy from preaching. Amen. I'll tell you straight up, I don't know what happened, but it turned off. And I know the upper room didn't do it. So check yourself. I, I started thinking, I hear this all the time, I deserve to be mad. I got hurt in my life. I didn't deserve this to happen to me. I want you to stop and think just for a moment. The man on the right could have said the same thing. But he chose to look at God and say, Hey, I don't understand. All I know is I'm beside Jesus. It's all that matters to me. I'm beside Jesus. He could have rebelled. He could have turned and said, look what they've done to me, how they treated me. This, they whipped me, and they, they run a spear through me. I am a criminal. I am a thief, and I don't deserve this. I'm, you call yourself Jesus. He could have rebelled too, Dana. But he said, no, 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 no. He had a sweet spirit. He had a gentle spirit. He had a broken spirit. He was soft and gentle See, the the man on the right-hand side of the cross saw everything the man on the left-hand saw. Could you imagine this? Just just dream with me just for a moment. Three crosses, three men, two of them thieves, but Jesus in the middle. Think about this. The man on the left was on the cross of rebellion. The man on the right was on the cross of repentance. This is the man on the right that he seen them. 
Listen to this. Listen to me. Don't let, don't let the old death and the cross become boring in your life. I think that's what's wrong with the churches today. We're so blessed. We're sitting back. We're blessed and we're sitting in a car. I old seat this morning and nothing's wrong in a lot of our life. But can I tell you, God died for you the same way he died for me. He had to die. And don't let the cross become boring to you in your life. This man on the right, he looked over and he seen Jesus bleeding. He seen the crowns that they put on his head and they took old stick and they drew back mama and they knocked Jesus in the head and the most, them old thorns. Listen to me this morning. I know this is graphic and you don't hear about this a lot in church, but it was a rated R scene. It was bloody. He took the stick and they started whipping Jesus on the head. Them old thorns dug deep down in the crown of his head. That thief saw that, Glenn. That, that thief saw that. He saw them hand up the water and the vinegar on the sponge. Say, here, drink it. And Jesus just turned his head. They saw them come by to the criminals that had a, 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 a stick in their hand. And this is the truth. They, they, they went to the man on the left and they had a big old stick in their hand, a big old board, and they drew back and hit their legs and they broke their legs. That way, when they were hanging on the cross, they couldn't have air in their lungs because it collapsed. That man on the right saw that. He saw them take a spear. This ain't no play spear. This is a spear. And they, they took that spear and they, Jesus was hanging on that cross and they speared him in the side. They said at that moment, water and blood gushed out of, of Jesus' body. And what that means is this. You must be born again. I know you're born of water and the birth sack breaks. Water goes everywhere. But it's the blood. It's the blood of Jesus that gets you into heaven. you got to transfer from water to the blood. Hallelujah. But when you're in the blood, Jamie, he's got you. He's got you. God spoke unto me. And I want you to write this down. Because I know we've got some hurting people out there, and I believe God started ministering to me last night. He said, you tell the people there's power in their seed. He said, you tell the people there's power in the seed. See, that man on the left-hand side of the cross was on the cross of rebellion. That man on the right-hand side of the cross was on the cross of repentance. And God spoke deep down in my spirit last night. I couldn't even type. I couldn't write. Tears were flowing down my face. And I was tore up from the floor up. Hallelujah. And God spoke these words. He said, somewhere along the way, somebody planted a seed in the man on the right-hand side of the cross. I don't know if it was his mama. I don't know if it was his daddy. I don't know if it was his Sunday school teacher. I don't know if it was a missionary passing through. But something happened on the cross. That man was there on the cross. This man was cussing. And this man said, oh, hold on. Mama told me about this man. Granny prayed about this man. Papa preached about this man. And I got a seed. I got a seed in me. Y'all feel that? See, you're not alone. You're not alone. That seed birthed on that cross. Ah, that seed birthed on that cross. What mama put in him. I remember mama used to make me mad. We'd be out playing in the summer with basketball. John, you remember all this? And mama would come to the door. She'd say, boys, time to go church. And me and John would have to lay the ball down. And first all the way home, I can't believe she wants us to go to church on a Sunday night. Are you kidding me? And we'd get to church. There won't be like 10 of us there, but hallelujah, all it takes is two. But something, mama put a seed in me. Now I'm 41 years old and I look back and mama should have beat me, Hallelujah. Mama should have spanked old Rafferty all the way to the house. But I had a mama that planted a seed in me. And today, that seed's a birthing in my life. It's coming to fruition in my life. Keep bringing them to church. Keep preaching the Word. And I'm telling you, yeah, Sunday school's good. Church is good. And Sunday night is good. Don't you give God your little Sunday mornings. There's a seed in you. 
There's a seed in this church. And what's happened has been a mini man of God preached the Word of God behind this pulpit. The Word, the seed went forth. And the Bible says, His Word shall not return void. That means today, hallelujah, we're standing in the gap because men of God have stood up and preached the Word of God. And moms and daddies didn't give up when everybody else gave up. Had a woman come to me last week and she said these words. She said, boy, she said, you get excited. Here's what I told her. I said, you know, I'm embarrassed to say this. But when the devil had me, I ran with the devil. I act like the devil. I talk like the devil. But I'm telling you, it's sort of like a little two-step. Sometimes you got to change partners. And somewhere along the way, I change partners. I quit two-stepping with the devil. Hey! And I started two-stepping with God. And I'm telling you, I've never been the same. People say all the time, are you for real? Does it work? I'm telling you, I've had my left side moments, but today I stand here today saying, Lord, I repent of my sins. I repent of my sins. God, I'll never be the same. Lord, remember me. Remember me. Remember me. Listen to this, I'm almost done. I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but keep planting those seeds. Y'all hear me? Some of you are ready to give up. Listen to this. I don't know. I'm thinking right now. God's good because I'm preaching. God's like, say this and say that. I'm like, God, one at a time. I started thinking just now. The Spirit's feeding me, so God, I thank you for this. I don't know how long your husbands are going to run, your children are going to run, your family's going to run, but it may be when they're on their last moment on the cross. It may be their last breath. I feel the Lord on this one. They may be on their dying bed. But I believe and I declare today, somewhere the seed will birth. Somewhere he'll be on that cross and look over and say, Hey, remember me. Remember me. Last breath was his first breath in heaven. Last thing I want to give you, I'm done. Turn to your neighbor and say Merry Christmas. I'll make sure y'all not sleep. All right, what was the first point? The cross of what? Rebellion. Second cross was what? Repentance. This last cross is the cross of redemption. Glory. Yes. I don't know about you. But I praise the Lord this morning that I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I know some of you are in a well of a mess right now. I know some of you are sitting there going, Brian, you don't understand my circumstances. Oh, yes, I do. You're the the one on the left this morning. And all you got to do is repent to be redeemed. Y'all see how the crosses work together? You know, that man on the left could have been in heaven today. That man on the left who rebelled, his heart was so hard. He, listen, seconds away from dying, his heart was so hard. He says, if you're God, get off the cross. Cussing him out. That's a hard heart. You know, I've ran into people like that before. You could, I'm telling you, say Jesus Christ is coming. Oh, by the way, he didn't come back the 21st either. Y'all know what I'm saying? I've had people to call me. Listen, please, Elkhorn. And if you're listening by radio today, read the Bible. Read the Bible. People are in freak-out mode. God is coming back. The churches are full. Repent, repent, repent. (laughs) How about this? Repent and be ready when he comes back. Get on your knees and repent, says the Lord. Repent now. Don't wait for him to come back and take your chance. My Lord, churches, I, it just blows my mind. What if he comes back and I don't know Jesus? You're going to hell. I, you say, Brian, you're too rough. Hell is rough. You're not going to go to hell and smoke a cigarette. You're going to be smoking. Can y'all handle truth? 
Because y'all not going to look at me one day up in glory and say, Rafferty didn't tell me. I say, yes, I did. They just didn't listen. It's the truth. If you don't know Jesus, you're the man on the left right now today. You do not know God. You're disconnected. you got a rebellious spirit. Then the book of Numbers, the Bible says this rebellion is the spirit of witchcraft. Wow. Got a lot of rebellious witchcraft spirits in the church today, and I call that out in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, one way to get rid of it, call on Jesus. Just call on the Lord. If drugs has got you encaved right now and surrounding you, don't be like the man on the left and say, well, one day I'll get over it. One day I'll... Lord, you said you'd do it, do it, do it, do it. Don't put the drugs down. He's done did it. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> cross will redeem you. I thought about this. The last words. Listen to this. I'm done. The last words the thief on the right side of the cross heard. Listen to this. The last words. Y'all got me? Say, I got you, preacher. Come on, give me five more minutes. I'm done. Y'all out of here. You're going to Mexico. Mexican. Y'all, I'm going to Fiesta and eat. Listen to me. This man on the left had the same chance as the man on the right. He was rebelling. This one was repenting. I started thinking about when this man on the right, the last words he heard from his Savior. Don't y'all think, Lord, let me preach this. <coughs> last words. He's seen the crucifixion. His legs were broke. His, he was gasping for air. I just seen this in my mind. That man on the right, he heard these last words from God. He said, Father, forgive them. I started thinking about this man on the right side of the cross. He said, this is, this is Jesus. And I just see, I can see in my mind, his legs were broken. He was going down. His lungs were collapsing. But he'd come up, and I just see this in my spirit this morning. He would come up, and he would say, Lord. And he'd go back down. Lungs were collapsing. Remember. Me! And the last words the man heard on that cross that was broken and busted and disgusted and a thief, he looked around and said, Today, 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 you will be with me in heaven. You'll be with me in paradise. You don't have to hurt no more. I know you're a thief. I know you're no good, but I'm God. Hallelujah. That's what God said. That's what the Lord said. I was the thief on the left. I went from the rebellious, contrite spirit to the one on the right. He says, Lord, remember me in today. I thought about this and I'm done. Praise team, y'all come. Because if I don't shut up, I can preach for two hours. Listen to this. Listen to this. Good, good, good stuff. You got me? All right. Thought about this. Think about this. Y'all got to dream with me because I, well, I just don't read the Bible and say, well, praise be the Lord. The Bible's got to come to life. You got it? It's got to be who you are. And listen to me. I'm going to tell you something. God's got you. I feel, I, I see this. I do. God's going to use you to touch people in your school. Are you still in school anywhere? Okay. I'm just going to make sure God's speaking to me. All right. Did, can you help people in your school system? Will you help people in your school system? We don't need another 20 kids dying. The, listen, oh, God is feeding me, John. This is good. Isn't it amazing we took prayer and Bible out of school? We took it out. But then now, when they go to jail, we give them a Bible and they want prayer. Yep. Oh, Terry, that's so good. Isn't it amazing? Why don't we put it back in the school and let them pray and read their Bible and they may not go to jail to read it and to pray. We need a revival back in this country. We need it back in the school. We need it back in the house of God. Hey, we need that today. We need God. We don't need to get rid of him. We need God. We need God. I need him more today. I need the presence of God. Hey, I mean, y'all wearing me out today, but it's good. 
I thought about this, Sheila. This man on the right said, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry, I repent. The man on the left could have done that, but the man on the right said, I'm dying. How many of you know you're dying right now? You're listening to me. Take care of yourself. Take care of your body. But one day, you're going to die. Listen to me. But listen, there's a whole lot of things worse than dying. Y'all got, ooh. Y'all feel this? Man, I feel the Lord. I feel the Lord. God, I praise you. I thought about Jesus. He said, today, you'll be with me in heaven. And Dixie, I dedicate this part to you. I thought about Jesus walking through heaven. He died. He died, he died a crucial, one of the worst deaths. He got beat 39 times with a cat of nine tails. I don't know why he did it, but he just loved you. He hung on a cross six hours one Friday. He took a beating. But however, I just thought he, when he died, he, he went to heaven. The Bible says it's to be absent from the body, it's to be present with the Lord. Amen. I thought about Jesus walking through those pearly gates and heaven rejoicing. And the angels shouting, Holy! Holy, 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 holy. I thought about Abraham and Isaac and Jacob saying, that's my king, that's my Lord. And all of a sudden, a man, a thief, stepped in right behind. Y'all didn't get this. John, y'all listen to me. Oh God, thank you, Holy Spirit. He never went to church. He never read his Bible. He never went to a business meeting. He never bought a blue chair. He wasn't religious. He didn't know theology. Oh, but he knew Jesus. He knew Jesus. He didn't have a suit on. He didn't know his ABCs, admit, believe, and confess. All he said was, Father, God, Lord, Remember me. My question to you is this. Which cross are you on this morning? Listen to me. Let, let the Holy Spirit move. Which cross are you on this morning? Are you on the left side of God, left side of the cross, hanging there minutes, moments, seconds away from dying and saying, God, I don't deserve what I'm going through. Lord, if you're God, get off that cross and get me off that cross. And cussing and renting and raving, living like a heathen, talking like a heathen, doing what you want. I'm going to tell you there is a place called hell. It don't get talked about much, but there is a place called hell. And if you are like the thief on the left side of the cross, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I don't care how many times you've come to church. The Bible just, it just keeps speaking and speaking and speaking and speaking and speaking. You can tithe all you want. You can be a Sunday school all you want. You can be a pastor if you say you want to be a pastor. You can have a title over your name. But if you're the thief on the left, you will die and go to hell. Y'all get this? But, I thought about this too, Dina. The right side of the cross. I wonder why he was on the right side of the cross. Think about this. Because the right side of the cross, that's where Jesus is sitting right now, at the right hand of the Father. Right means power, authority. And when God died, let's just get in your spirit. When God died, we represent, if you know Jesus, the man on the right hand side of the cross. And God says, you died on the right side, huh? You died on the right side of me. You died knowing me. And God says, I give you all power. I give you all authority in the name of Jesus. Merry Christmas. The best Christmas you ever have 
It's not about the gift under the tree. It's that gift that was on that tree. That's Merry Christmas. You've got to start unwrapping that gift. Quit being Christian hoarders. Start unwrapping that gift. Quit rebelling against God. Quit making excuses to live the way you're living. You've got to cross over. See, everything happens in life, you've got to cross through the cross. There was a little boy in London, England. He got lost from his parents. True story. He got lost from his parents. He ran into a police officer. And that police officer said, young man, I see you're upset and you're crying. He said, what's wrong? He said, I, I can't get home. I've, I've lost my mom and I've lost my daddy. And I can't get home. That police officer said, young man, what's your address? And the young man was so shaken up, Blake, he said, I don't remember. I don't know, I don't remember. He said, young man, what's your phone number? Gosh, I'm just lost, sir. Will you please get me home? He said, is there anything that you remember so I can help you get home? Listen to this, Bane. That little boy said, yeah. This is true, check it out. In London, England, in the center of their square is a cross. Somewhere along the way, that little boy saw a cross. And that little boy told the police officer, he said, sir, if you can get me to the cross, I'll find my way home. If you, somebody help me praise him. If you will get to the cross, hey, God, I'm sorry. Forgive me, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. Oh, Lord, remember me. Remember me, God. I don't want to die and go to hell. Lord, I don't want that. Today. Today, right now. Wherever you're at, quit rebelling. Cross over. Repent. And you'll find redemption. Y'all got it? Today. <laughs> Next, I don't want to bring up the past. But I want you to have peace in this. Your precious daddy today. His last breath here on earth. I can just see your daddy. Oh Lord, I'm ready. Remember me I, today. Today, your daddy is waiting for you. Today, my daddy is waiting for me. Today, no matter where you're at, there's redemption through the blood of the cross. Stand to your feet today. Come on. Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood. Listen to me. Listen to me. I don't know where you're at. You may be rebelling this morning. <laughs>